Lord God, the Father in heaven, I just ask you to bless this time, Lord God, being in your word. Lord I God, I hope you to have us to grow and for others to come and want to grow, Lord God. But right now, Lord, the Bible says we're two or three are gathered together, and there's four of us, Lord. Amen. For Jesus' sake, Lord God, we pray. We thank you. Amen. Yes, amen. All right. I think I heard a first, uh, first John. I keep saying first John. I don't know why I should say first John. In John <laughs> chapter 1, I heard a verse 12, but we'll do that. Right. But we're in 13. Oh. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. That's right there. The gospel is that Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures and was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. What defines a Christian? Verse 12. Now John's gospel is the gospel that's written much later. And you will see church age doctrine. Not specifically for the church, but there of the church doctrine in John. More so of what you find in the, in the gospel of Matthew, which is written... Jewish. Churches run to Matthew, but they don't run to John. John's the latest gospel. John is the same John that the revelation that God somehow kind of raptured him kind of up and showed him what the future is. It's the same John. In verse 13, <clears throat> which were born not of blood, nor the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. And we're looking at that Later on in chapter 3, we're going to get, <clears throat> if we ever get there, the new birth. And I think we talked about that last week with the birth. We were born of a woman. That's nature. Now, you can unidentify you with any sex and be any sex you want to be, but there's one thing. Only a woman can give birth to a child. For a man, physically impossible. You would have to have a cesarean always. And the thing is, when a person is born of a woman of the human nature, i got to say that because people think dogs go to heaven, once you are born in this world, you are born into sin and you need a Savior. Now there's an age up to, from birth to 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, I don't know. The age of accountability, I mean, if a child dies three, four years old and he doesn't know what he's doing, that child will go to heaven. But that child is still born in sin. He's still a sinner, just had no acknowledgement. But here we're looking at, and there was a guy just in the news, I don't know what happened to him, but he sued his parents, or suing his parents, because he was born. They did not ask his permission. So not having his permission, he's suing his parents because he was born. Birth is no obligation to me. But when I was born, I was born into sin. That's no obligation to me. That's of Adam. But I can't blame my mom. I can't blame my grandparents. I can't blame my grandparents. I can't blame Adam. It's my nature. What am I going to do with it? I can pity party, I can pussy party and all that. I can blame anybody and everybody who I want. But what are you going to do with it? God has prescribed a way. So, when we're looking at the birth here, we're born to die. It's that simple. There's one verse that we can apply for our scripture and for our prophecy. The wages of sin is death. We are going to die when we're born. Sometime, anywhere. And what we do, as far as what Jesus Christ will settle our eternity. Now look at a grave marker. It says the year that you were born, almost all have at least a year, and it has the year you died. That little dot is your life. That little dash is your life. And you better have somewhere where you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. If you don't, you go off into eternity. Now, 2 Peter, chapter 1, verse 21. 2 Peter, chapter 1, verse 21. We're looking at kind of the wills. 
And we're going to continue in the birth today. And we're going to look more to Jesus now, where last week we looked at the human. And we went to a little bit of Jesus. But 2 Peter 1.21 says, For prophecy came not in old time by the will of man. Alright? That would have been a false prophet. Or a false beast. Called a roundhog. But holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. That's inspiration. Now there are plenty of people out there with, you know, they get their tea leaves, the crystal ball, they read the bumps on your head, all the ways of devilishness. But what's the accuracy of those of those prophecies? But what's the accuracy of God in His 100%? When James I mean, let's take that. When Jeremiah, Isaiah, Abraham, David, when those men spoke prophecy, it was not of them. They didn't say one day they're sitting there in their easy chair. Oh, I think that. Oh, let me see. Uh, a woman's going to give birth to a child that she's never had a relationship with any man. Uh, that sounds good, right? That's not that. And that's far better than say. Well, in 2019, an important person is going to die this year. Duh. Yeah. So, when we're looking at birth, when we're looking at man, it's not the will of man. Some births are accidental. There was no way planned. It was a fun evening. It turned into, all right, here's a child. So when we look at birth, we're going to look now, we're going to look on the realm. I know we're talking about Christians in John 1, 3, 13, but let's look at the time of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is spoken of as God. He's spoken of as the Word. He's spoken of as the light. This is all we've seen so far. Creator. Savior. God manifested in the flesh, and yet He was born. Now you will have in Greek and Roman mythology, this big God will mate with this human being, they make a minor God. This human would mate with this God and you get minor gods. And some gods do other gods and you got other gods. That's Baal, Asterisk, and Balaam. Baal, he's the big mighty male God. Asterisk, he, she's the female moon God. And all the stars are made by them both. That's mythology in a nutshell. They just copy what God has. So, when we saw in 1 John 1, 13, not of blood. Let's look at the virgin birth, Isaiah 9, 6. A little more detail. Isaiah chapter 9, 6. We're going to look at Jesus Christ. Because that verse also applies. Let me ask you, besides Santa Claus, Besides the, the pretty little Christmas tree and the, the unknown three wise men that did not show up at the birth of Jesus and goodwill to joy to all men and deck the halls and all that, who of what man, of what human, of what woman ever said, God, we need a Savior to be born? No one. Mary was not cleaning dishes one day while Joseph was out doing carpentry work and say, you know what, I think I'll just have a baby that will be the savior of the whole world. That wasn't her. It had to be all of God. And there are people who will imitate and they will violate the virgin birth to say Mary had relations with Joseph, Mary had relations with others outside of Joseph. And Joseph thought that same clause in angel wisdom said, no, listen, this is of uh, the Holy Ghost. So Isaiah 9, 6, starting off with the virgin birth. For unto us a child is born. Now right next to that, right, that's the virgin birth. Okay? That is Jesus human. He's born. 
every human is born. Unto us a son is given. Now right next to that son in your Bible, you write in your Bible, write God. God is never born. So how do you get the virgin birth in the prophecy of Isaiah chapter 9? All right, born. That's the baby Jesus, the humility of Jesus. Man and Jesus. 100% man. Okay, well now he's God. What are you going to do with God? Given. A son is given. The Son of God. So Jesus Christ was born as a human, but he's been given as God. As God is given to us, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, cross reference that Isaiah 9. Six, nine That's the cross reference. So Jesus is not too. I don't know how to say it yet. He's not a human, and he's not God. He's not God. He's not a human. He's both. And yet the human side of him has been born, and yet the God side of him has been given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. And he took that cross and buried it on his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful, capital, Counselor, capital, the Mighty God. Again, take this verse and show it to any Jehovah Witness having to wet their britches because what are you going to do with that? You've got to say we're talking about Jesus. This is the virgin birth. You can't say this is Jehovah and yet it's Jehovah. So we're definitely the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Well, even the Catholics believe that Prince of Peace is Jesus Christ. There's a church down in Norman Beach named the Prince of Peace. You just don't want to be down there when they have their, their feasts and there's stupid music in the hog lot. Carnival. So, in the crease of the government and peace there shall be no end. That hasn't happened yet. That's prophecy. Upon the throne of David. That's important. Because Gabriel will tell Mary that child you're going to have is going to sit on the throne of David. Uh, to order it, to establish with judgment with justice henceforth for e henceforth ever and forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. That loving Jesus that everybody just doesn't think he's just a fruity cage kind of wimpy kind of savior. He's gonna judge with a rod of iron. But there's the, there's the virgin birth prophesied in Isaiah. And it said it's God and it's man in one. Man is born, God is given. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14. And remember what we said about the throne of David there. Because that will come to play. Isaiah 7, 14. You know, there's these things about God that will wow the man. And there's things that God has given to salvation as far as, okay, describe the new birth. I can't. I don't even know when I had that new birth. Like I said, on uh, April 21st, 1987, I knelt down and asked Christ to save me, but my heart was searching ever since that Sunday before the message I got. If I had died on Wednesday, would I have still been in heaven? Was that new birth, I know the, the public confession with the mouth, but it says with the heart man believes on the righteousness, that could have been Sunday afternoon. And it took me to Saturday to, to confess. It may have been Monday when I called my grandma and said, hey, i got to do something. That wasn't just a church you invited me to. So I can't tell you when my new, I can tell you when I asked the Lord to say, but I can't tell you when that new birth. Now, I got paperwork, I got documentation from the state of Connecticut, the city of New London. Now, I was born at 10 something a.m. September 6, 1968. That's the physical birth. But there, you can't put a date on the tombstone when I was born again. I can tell you when I did it. And there's the thing in Isaiah 7, 14. Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Some Jews require a sign. Behold, 
a virgin, we know what a virgin is, mm -hmm. shall conceive. Now, right there, that's impossible. What we're going to talk about. Yeah, a virgin shall conceive. Well, if she conceives, she's no longer a virgin. Simple of sex education 101. <laughs> okay? Conceive it would be you're no longer a virgin. A virgin shall conceive and shall bear a son. Well, that's, that's really nailing it down, isn't it? You either, have a, you either can have a son or a daughter, as far as the Bible goes. Well, 50-50 chance now. Yet later on the line, there was a son to be born. Now, if, if this would happen today in this society, I think it was, there's 200 no genders of people, something like that. But there's only male and female. And bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Butter and honey shall he eat, that he may know to refuse evil and choose good. So here's the one. Gonna, here's God eating and drinking. Isn't that interesting? For for before yeah, for before the child shall know to refuse evil, refuse the evil, and choose the good. So he's a toddler. He doesn't know. If he finds a stick on the ground, he may try to eat it, thinking it's food. He doesn't know if it's stick. He doesn't know what the electrical cords will do. He doesn't know that 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 skull and crossbones means you don't touch. He has no idea. That's Jesus. That's God manifesting the flesh. Jesus put that down. No, don't touch that, Jesus. That's what the Bible says about it. And chose the good, the land that thou abhorrest shall be forsaken of both her kings. And when Jesus is born, there is no king. There is a Herod. Rome. So Matthew 1.18. Matthew 1.18. Now we're going to go to Matthew because Matthew is a Jewish book about the Jewish Messiah, of the Jewish people, about the Jewish prophecies, about the Jewish tribulations coming up about Jew, 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 Jew. And there's good things in Matthew, alright? Can't just throw Matthew in the garbage can. Matthew 1.18. But you got to rightly divide the Word of God. Can I use it for me? Now there's three applications of Scripture. There's historical. Matthew happened. Yes, it did. Okay? Doctrinally, Matthew's written to the people of Israel, the Jewish Messiah. I can spiritualize, I can put some points in Matthew and apply it to our lives. Okay? Where, you know, Jesus, the Sermon on the Mount, those not written to me. I can take some great points in the Sermon on the Mount and how we can live as Christians. But that's not going to judge our heaven and hell. That's not... You know, it won't be false doctrine, but we can spiritualize it. So you can't just throw the Bible books. There's 66 books in the Bible. But you can't go running into Matthew and make a doctrine where something is to be spiritualized. That's where you got false churches and false teaching. Like me going knocking on doors, they got to build an ark. Why? The end of the world's coming. Well, am I supposed to believe Jesus Christ? No, build an ark. It says over here in Genesis. Build an ark and all these animals will come two by two. He said, well, that's nonsense. Well, isn't that what they did in Tennessee? They built an ark and now they're making money off the Word of God. I don't know, imagine what they charged. So Matthew chapter 1, verse 18. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. Here's how it happened. So we're going to get an in-depth recording of the Holy Spirit about the birth of Jesus. When, as his mother Mary was a spouse of Joseph, they weren't married, but, you know, they're going to be married. Before they came together, there's the marriage bed. There was no relations between Mary and Joseph. She was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Alright, there's the virgin birth. She had no relations with no man, and yet she's pregnant. 
And that pregnancy, not of man, but of the Holy Ghost. Again, that's imitated in uh, mythology. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privily. Now he's thinking something happened to his bride. I'm just going to, I'm going to get rid of her quietly. I'm not going to make a big deal. But she's been unfaithful to me. The, the baby proves it. So Joseph, in his reaction, acknowledges that he had not had any relations with Mary. By his attitude. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord, which is Jesus Christ in the Old Testament, the baby that's now in her womb is now speaking to Joseph. Isn't God great? Amen. Appeared on him in a dream. Now I guarantee he wasn't a child in the womb. He appeared as a God. The same God that appeared to Hagar. That's where the first time she, the angel of the Lord shows up. Genesis 16 with Hagar. Saint Joseph, well, he knows who Joseph is. I know your I know your name. I call my sheep by their name. Thou son of David, that's important. There's David again. Joseph is going to adopt Jesus Christ legally, that would be binding in law courts. Fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife. Now look, a wife is also a wife when they're, the Bible speaks about them as spouse. In the Bible, engagement to a man or woman is as a legal marriage. It's not in your final days you go out and have a stag party and, you know, you sow your wild oats. Yeah. Not in the Bible. It's a husband and wife, even though you weren't married. Uh... Marry thy wife for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost, okay? The virgin has conceived a baby without no man. Joseph, it's the Holy Ghost that done it. And she shall bring forth a son. Isaiah. Isaiah. And thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Jesus means Jehovah saves. Now all this was done that, we might, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord, by the prophet, saying, here we go, now we're going to quote what we just read. Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son. Okay. That's the baby. That's God. <laughs> bring forth. The baby's in the womb, and the son is God. Shall be with child. That's the human part. Shall bring forth a son. Again, that's God part. They shall call his name Emmanuel, which is being interpreted God with us. That's now we got the interpretation from Isaiah. Isaiah, what does Emmanuel say? We'll go ask Matthew. It means God is with us. What is Jesus? Jehovah saves. Number 24. Then Joseph being raised from his sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took unto him his wife. He knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son. Now why would the Holy Spirit put that in there if after Jesus was born that there were no relations between him and Mary? The fact is that Mary did have other children. And if you're going to celebrate the Virgin Mary, you've got to celebrate the Virgin Joseph too. But they don't. If Mary is a virgin, so was Joseph, and yet the Bible says that there were relations after, after, and for her firstborn, and he called his name Jesus, just like the scriptures say. Chapter 2, verse 1. Matthew. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod, so there's a prophecy of Micah. Child should be born in Bethlehem, or Ephah, Bethlehem. Everything prophesied about Jesus, his birth, is here it is. 
Luke chapter 1, 26. So, the birth of Jesus, the virgin birth, which must be believed, is not something that, boom, here is the news of virgin birth. It has been long waited. It was an anticipation of Jewish women that, hey, I could be the mother of the Messiah. In Luke chapter 1, verse 18. We read again now, again about, And Zacharias said unto the angel, Whereby shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife, my wife well stricken in years, like Sarah. And the angel answered and said unto him, I am Gabriel, which stand in the presence of God. This is one of the few angels that's named. Michael, Lucifer, I don't think there's any other name given an angel. But God knows their names according to Psalms. They all have names. Gabriel stands in the presence of God and sent to speak unto thee and to show thee these glad tidings. And behold, thou shalt be dumb, unable to speak. And to the day that these things shall be performed, because thou believest not my words, which shall be fulfilled in their season. Now this is not about Jesus, this pregnancy and birth of the Son. This is about John the Baptist. John the Baptist, the forerunner of Jesus, also spoken about in Isaiah chapter 39, was also a prophecy, was also visited by the same angel Gabriel. And we run down now to... Uh, let's see, verse number 26, Luke 1, 26. The angel's been busy. Mm -hmm. In the sixth month, six months after he visited Zacharias, Elizabeth has become pregnant. She is in her six months of pregnancy. John the Baptist is six months older than Jesus. They're in the same family, believe it or not. So verse 26, in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God, like he sent him in Zacharias, unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth. And when Pilate will nail the thing above the, on the cross above the head of Jesus, Jesus of Nazareth, the king of the Jews. It says Nazareth, it does not say Nazarite. Get that. There's a big difference. To a virgin, there it is again, a spouse to a man whose name is Joseph, Matthew chapter 1, of the house of David. We saw that Matthew chapter 1, David's important. And the virgin's name was Mary. <laughs> and the angel came unto her and said, Hail thou, hail thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, not above women. Jael, in the book of Judges, is, above, is blessed above women, not Mary. J.L. took the, the, the hammer and the nail and put it through Scissor's head, I believe it was his name. And when she saw him, the angel, him, the angels of him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast her in mind what manner of salutation this should be. Now Mary's like, what do you mean I'm in good favor with God? Look how humble Mary is. Me? God knows me? That's what troubled her. You are highly, thou are highly favoring the Lord. Blessed art thou. I don't know what you're talking about, sir. Not me. Surely you got the wrong address. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary. So she had fear. She was fearing this angel. That's a man. For thou hast found favor with God. So he explains it again to her. That's what troubled her. God and me. I don't know why. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son. There it is again, Isaiah. See, the son or daughter. That's the prophecy. And shall call his name Jesus. We saw that in Matthew. Jehovah saves. He, Jesus, shall be great. And shall be called the Son, capital S, that's Isaiah, 
For unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given. There it is. You're going to have in your womb, there's the baby, there's the born, and, you should, and the son of the highest, a son is given, John 3.16, there it is. There is Isaiah 9.6 and Isaiah 7.14, and not in a nutshell. There it's explained out. There's the prophecy. The son of the highest and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne, that's Isaiah 7, 14, 15, 16, the throne of his father, David. He shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, Isaiah 7, and his kingdom shall be no end, there's Isaiah 7. There is angel Gabriel speaking to Mary about the virgin birth and the kingdom of this child that she's going to have that's been prophesied. Now, there's a problem because Mary's a virgin. She has not known any relation with man. So, a woman does not pass on seed. There's no name given to a woman. A woman takes her father's name or her husband's name. Joseph is going of David, Matthew chapter 1, Joseph is going to legally adopt this baby that's born of Mary, of God. And that's where you're going to get the kingly line. Now when you run the genealogies of Joseph, he is of David and the lines of the kings. Mary is a line of David, but it doesn't go to Solomon. It goes to the son called Nathan. But she is of the family of David. you got two families of David. And the adoption family is the one that goes to the king. So, he shall be great, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom shall have no end. Then said Mary unto him, unto the angel, verse 34, How shall this be seen? I know not a man. I have not been with a man. I am still a virgin. There's a virgin birth. That's a good question. And the angel answered. The senator, the Holy Ghost, shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee, born unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. Now watch, there's the born. Now watch the son get given. Shall be called the son of God. And the passages we read with Isaiah 7, what we read in Matthew, what we read in Luke, there is God manifested in the flesh 100%, and there's God manifested in God 100%. There they both are. And behold thy cousin Elizabeth. Now, thy cousin Elizabeth, that's interesting. Mary and Elizabeth, John the Baptist's mother, are cousins. John the Baptist and Mary are related so when we run to Luke chapter 1, run to Luke chapter 1, verse 5. There was in the days of Herod the king of Judea a certain priest named Zacharias of the course of Abiah, and his wife was the daughters of Aaron, that's the high priest, and her name was Elizabeth. Somewhere in the line of Mary, Judah crossed over into the priest, Aaron. The Levite. So through Mary, you also have, which she don't carry the name, but, but there's also the Levites in the, in the line of Jesus Christ. Through Mary, Elizabeth, their cousin. So, John chapter 1, verse 1. John chapter 1, verse 1. So the bloodline of a male child is not with Jesus, because it's virgin. The characteristics that Jesus will get his maleness come from God the Father through the Holy Ghost. In the beginning was the Word, capital W. Those are the capital letters we read in Isaiah. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So Amen. there we have, verse 3, chapter 1, verse 3. All things were made by him. Without him was not anything made that was made. Well, here's this, this word that's been born incarnate, and it's the creator. It's God. It has to be God. 
no matter what you believe. And in verse one, I mean chapter one, verse eighteen, no man has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, the Son is given, which is in the bosom of the Father, capital F, He has declared Him. So the only way you're going to see God is when you see Jesus Christ or God the Spirit. And they that worship must worship the Spirit and truth, but there's Jesus Christ. There He is, God manifesting in the flesh. Now, like I said, we got we got a lot to deal here with blood. Another blood. Proverbs 20, verse 9. Proverbs 20, verse 9. A lot of these, most of these are all in order. Only time I go out of order is when I really have to explain something, but I try to get them right in order. Mm -hmm. So we don't have to go back here, go there, go back there, go here. Proverbs 20, verse 9. Now we're coming to the relationship of man born of blood. In Proverbs 20, verse 9, who can say I had made my heart clean? I am pure from my, from my sin. You know, even Jesus can't say that. You, he can't be pure of sin that he never had. So we're not talking about Jesus Christ because he never had sin. He does not need to be pure. But, so on the relationship of man, what man can say, I am pure of my sin? I have made my heart clean. Well, a Christian can by the works and the merit of Jesus Christ, if thou shalt confess thy sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us and to wash us and cleanse us from all iniquity. 1 John 1, 9. That's the only way I can say that, that remark there. But is it say, okay, I'm clean because I went to a priest, I'm clean because I am who I am, that's, no, you can't say that. So that question, man is filthy, man is vile, man's a sinner. All has sinned come short of the glory of God. Psalms 51. Psalms chapter 51. And like we said, when we're going to we're going to John, we're doing it quite slowly, but look at all the fields we're getting. Psalms 51. Verse number 9. Scripture with Scripture. Study. Psalms 51 verse 9. With Proverbs, what we just read. Hide thy face from my sin and blot out all my iniquity. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit with me. So, how dare you go to another man? Will you exalt me of my sins? He came looking straight in the face. Look what he said. Hide thy face from my sin. So you know what they do in the Catholic Church? They put that little screen yeah. between. No, that's where it comes from. Yeah, I know. Wow. So when you go in there, Father, forgive me. I'm going to try to think. Father, forgive me. For, I say, hey, it's been such, such a long time since my last confession. I've done this sin and all that. According to the scripture here, which they steal, you are calling that priest. Look at that. Yeah. Because he's the only one by the Catholic Church to say, okay, I absolve you. Go say five Hail Mary. Four rosaries and whatever, you know. That's ridiculous. There it is. No. There it is. No. Did you not know? There is, a right there is a screen between you and that priest. Sorry to be, you can't see his face. But let's look at verse 5. Let's look at man. Behold, I was shaping iniquity. Thank you, Mom. Thank you, Adam. Amen. That's who we are. Why is the world so wicked? Because I was shaped in iniquity. Evolution's a lie. Mm -hmm. And in sin did my mother conceive me. There's where you have the virgin birth. Mary was not conceived of any man but of God the Father. There was no sin. There it is, by Jesus. When Mary and Joseph came together and had children, boys and girls, 
They were conceived in sin because of Joseph. The firstborn son, Jesus, had no sin, had no iniquity, because there was no man that came unto her. And what did Matthew say? So, I forget how it said, but he knew her not until she brought forth her firstborn son. So James, Salome, I'm trying to think, uh, Joneses, they were all sinners, Jesus wasn't. Behold, I was sheep in iniquity and sin did my mother conceive. So why do you have a little boy, bad boy, a terrible two child, and he just destructs your life because you just gave birth to a sinner? Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts, and in hidden parts thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Match that with Isaiah 1 18. Come unto me, all ye that. No, no. Oh, no, no, I said that. I meant, uh, Isaiah 1 18. Come now, let, let us reason together. Though your sins should be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Make me hear the joy and gladness that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins, and what we read in verse 9 and 10. The absence of Mary meeting with a physical male removed the iniquity that Jesus never had. I, uh, Psalms 58.3 Psalms 58.3 So Isaiah 58.3 So today would be called not of the blood. Isaiah 58.3 Now, in this, part, in this part of not of the blood, we're looking at, we look not of the blood of Jesus, and now we're looking not of the blood of man. It's a bloody mess when a child's born. Mm -hmm. I've never, but I've heard. <laughs> Isaiah 58, verse 3. I mean, excuse me, Psalm 58, 3. The wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they be born, speaking lies. Oh, their poison is in their their poison is like the poison serpent. They are like the death adder that stopped with her ear. That's a great thing to say about your little darling. That little come that, that bundle of joy. God says, You're a wicked sinner. You know what that sinner you know what that newborn bundle of joy is going to do for the next year. He is going to make you get up. He's going to make you get lost sleep. He's going to make you feed him. He's going to make you change his diaper if you didn't want to or not. Great little darling. And you know what that's called? Me, 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 myself, me, myself. I, I'm thinking of myself. I don't care what's going on. Ah! Even, and you know what? Even when they're not hungry or Even sure. when they're not hungry. I was going to say that. Even when they're not hungry. You know what that is? That's a sin. Pay attention to me. Even in infancy. We sin. It, it's isn't it amazing, and you'll get. I, we met one guy. Oh, I never sinned. Or we get. Oh, you know, I don't need a savior. Why? You're a sinner from birth. Uh, Genesis eight twenty one. Genesis eight twenty one. Hope that's twenty one. I right there. That can't be twenty nine. All right, yep, Genesis 8, 21. I write hard. The Lord smelled a sweet savor. Look at that, God can smell. Try that with your alcohol and your smoking and everything like that. God smelled it. And the Lord said in his heart, now, God don't have a heart to go boom, 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 I guarantee you. That's what we have, a heart, our emotion. I will not again curse the ground anymore for man's sake. For the imagination, oh, here's your brain, here's your mind, here's your thoughts. The imagination of man's heart. Oh, you thought you thought with your brain? You know why psychology doesn't work? Because they think you think with your brain. And the Bible says that when God spoke to Noah, when there's only Noah and seven other people on the earth, God said, the thought of your heart, and Jesus said, with the heart, there's murderers, adultery, lying, thefts, blah, 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 blah. But the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. 
There you go. In the blood, being born of Adam, guess what? I'm a wicked, vile sinner. So day number one, you are a sinner. That's God writes your name down, sinner. Now, if you die before the age of accountability, we won't get into it. I mean, you're not charged with a sin because you don't know. But once you know, and this is where the problem is, okay? A child can get scared when his mother catches his hand in the cookie jar. I mean, if you die after that, would he go to hell? No, it's when you realize that you sin against God and not your mother. Your mother and father is supposed to teach you what God is. And then once you realize that you have sinned against a higher being and you know of the accountability, now you need a Savior. When your mom teaches you, hey, you just did wrong, I'm going to punish you, I'm going to tell dad, or whatever how it goes in the family, you are doing in the eyes of God what the proverb says is correct. That child is supposed to fear God when they do wrong. I thank God for... My mom wasn't saved when I grew up as a child, but, you know, she had those, those characteristics she built into my behind. When I wanted to do something wrong, I actually thought about it before doing it. Uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 7, which is right after Proverbs. Right after Proverbs, Ecclesiastes chapter 7. And Ecclesiastes is one of them books you don't really want to build a church on because it's a worldly writings of the wisest man that God given us. A man that lived all the pleasures of life and then wrote about it, how miserable it was. <laughs> he went above and beyond the Greek philosophers. Uh, 720, yes. Chapter 7, verse 20. I've dealt with men like this all the time. There is not a just man on the earth, upon the earth, that doeth good and sinneth not. And the Bible says that Joseph was a just man. All right, he was proper and right among mankind, but in the eyes of God, you're not. Good. There is none that doeth good. There it is. That's where you find it in Romans chapter three. People will all say all the time to Rachel, "I hear." It. I had good ears. You know, Rachel will hand him, try to hand him a gospel track and he'll say, oh, I'm good. Mm -hmm. uh, I will shout about now. There is none that do is good. good. No, not one. Now you may be good, alright? Let me ask you a question. There's four people here. Tracy, what's your idea of good? Louise, what's your idea of good? How about you, Rachel? What's your idea of good? Tracy, do you want A's for, for tests and reports? Louise, would you like to see A's? Rachel, how would you like to get all A's? I said, look, see, now Rachel's like, I'm satisfied for a C. I'm good. <laughs> when I went to school, guess what? I accomplished myself. If I got a C, I did good. Oh. If I did a D or F, that was bad. But C, which meant average, I passed, that was my good. See, all things are not good because what is the standard of good? Unless you have a book to tell you what is actually good and what is not good. Now, we went around the table and you said, well, what's your favorite food? Well, the person's favorite food, you might say, ew. Tracy loves eggs. Ew. Gross. Except for hard-boiled eggs, but still. See, her eggs are good to her, but they're not good to me. Doctor, doctor tells me, I ought to exercise. Doc, that's not good for me. <laughs> See, we all have different goods. Mm -hmm. But when we have a Bible, we have a God that's holy and is set forth. This is good. I'm a good person. Okay, what's a good person? What if they just believe that that priest was a God that we just read? That's not good. What if they think water can say, that's not good. That's not proved of God. Job chapter 15. Job chapter 15. And especially today, 
There, this world is so wicked calling evil good and good evil. Do you realize that it is okay and good for a child to not know what sex they are? Do you know that a child has a whole different math? And that the state of Florida now is like, we're going to get rid of that uh, common, I was going to say common, common law. Core. Common core. Florida thinks about getting rid of it. I thought the math was good. It takes 20 steps to do a simple problem. Or, all right, let's see. Tracy and I, Rachel did this yesterday. Tracy and I learned that Sir Isaac Newton, to think the theory of gravitation was that he had an apple drop on his head. That's no good no more because that was a lot. 1492, Christmas, Columbus sailed the ocean blue. Now, to, to find the, the new world. No, he went on a vacation cruise and went to the Bahamas. He discovered the Indians. No, they knew they were here. In fact, the Vikings were here before us. Job 15, verse 14. Job 15, 14. What is man that he should be clean? And he which is born of a woman that he should be righteous. Behold, he, God, verse 13, God, Putteth no trust in his saints. That's me. That's you if you're saved. We're, we're saved. We're saints if we're saved. You don't have to be dead and canonized. You're a born again Bible believing Christian. You're a saint. You know what God says? I don't put no trust in you. Why? Style, I want you to give that guy a gospel track. Uh uh. Oh, Lord, I left him home. I ain't got none, Lord. How many times have we done that? I want you to do this. No. Nope. I don't want you to do that. And you do it. We're unreliable to God. Saints. Yea, the heavens are not clean in His sight. You ever see the picture of all the garbage orbiting the earth from NASA and the uh, Russian sp uh, uh, space and the Israel space and all the space rockets and all that? Now, I don't believe the moon landing, but Mars now has the rover and the, all these mechanical toys. And we got Hubble out there. You know what God says? He said, that's unclean. You're, you're filthy in my universe. i got to burn that off and roll it up as a scroll to get a new one. That's what God said. The universe, uh, what do you say? The heavens are not clean in sight. How much more abominable and filthy is man which drinketh iniquity like water? We, we already read the word iniquity. So we get people that snub their nose at people. Well, those people, not like us. God says, you're just as much as a vile sinner as that person is. You need the same Jesus Christ like that person does. I'm a CEO. Oh, I live underneath a bridge. You're still a sinner. You're still wicked in the eyes of God. Amazing God to say that. Jeremiah 17.9. Jeremiah 17.9. Doesn't God have such a great opinion of us? That's why people don't read the Bible. That's why they won't, remember we talked about churches, that's why they will not go to, to a good Bible-believing church. They don't want to hear how bad they are. Jeremiah 17, 9. You got to turn the page Jeremiah 17, 9. All right, take this to your psychiatrist. And this is what Jesus said in the Gospels. Jeremiah 17, 9. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? You know where the laugh is with that verse? What, does that say your heart is just unclean, wicked, vile, and sinning? Yeah, isn't that the symbol of love? Oh, Tracy, I just... Heart. Desperately, above all things, desperately wicked. <laughs> S-H and T-H. That's the symbol of Valentine's Day. And look what the Bible says. Mm -hmm. By the way, that, that symbol is not anything to do with love and just wickedness. But that's what God says about you when he looks at your heart. I do good. God says, that's wicked. That's vile. That's unclean. You need Jesus. 
Me, yes, you. You're born in Adam. Romans 3.10. Romans 3.10. Now we get the New Testament. In this case, some Christians out there, oh, it's the Old Testament. Still Jews. No, still us. Romans 3.10. couple more verses and we'll be done. Finishing up with man. Romans 3.10. Ready? As it's written, there is none righteous. No, not one. I love that verse. I love how God does it. Paul does it. Paul uses God. There's none righteous. Oh, but me. No. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> not you. It's almost like it's almost like Paul's right and someone's like, no. No way. <laughs> no. You know, it's like, it's like someone standing at the entrance. Okay, no one else can come. No, you can't come in. <laughs> it's so funny. Verse 23, 323, Romans. I quote this one all the time. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That means you're short. <laughs> you go to the cashier and it says 623. I got $5. You're short. Something's not coming home. Mm -hmm. Guess what? If you come short of God without Jesus Christ, you're not coming home to heaven. You fall short by all the sins. Your heart. It's wickedness. It's vile. Chapter 5, verse 12. Romans 5, 12. Now here's the reason. But we can't use it as an excuse. You can't say this is because of Adam. Romans 5, 12. Wherefore, as by one man, Adam, mm -hmm. sin entered the world. Don't eat that fruit. Mm. Realize we are in the trouble we are today, not because of a fruit. We don't know if it's an apple. We have no idea. What, because the disobedience of the word of God. Do you know where a man will go to hell today? Because he disobeyed the word of God by believing in Jesus Christ. So, uh, 12. And so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned, and then you run to that verse, Romans 6.23, the wages of sin is death. And Romans 5.19. For as by one man's disobedience, see, many were made sinners. That's kind of funny. Many, aren't we all sinners? Can you name one that wasn't a sinner? Jesus. Jesus. And you run back to Luke chapter 3, and guess whose name shows up very last in the list of Mary's genealogy? Adam. Which shows you that there's the virgin birth. It was not of Adam and the males that produced Jesus. Mary was only the vessel to provide the womb for that man child, the Son of God. So there it is. So for by one man's offense, death reigned by one, Adam, much more they which receive abundance of grace of the gift of righteousness, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. There it is. Glory to God. And one last place, 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians 15, 21. I'm going to the second place. 1 Corinthians 15, 21. Ooh, getting breezy. 1 Corinthians 15, 21. Now here's the new birth. You ready? For since by man came death, you're born to die. That's it. By man came also the resurrection of death. For as in Adam all die. So you realize when a psychiatrist you blame your mother. You know, you know, in a kind of a way they're devilish right. But they're not fully right. And then they remove the age of accountability. Okay, okay, I've got this disease. 
What am I going to do about it? It's my father's fault. It's my father's fault. Now you're going to do you no good. You got to go get something. You got to do something. Even so, in Christ shall all be made alive. I was born of a woman, born into sin. April 1987, I was born again. I had the new birth. I died through Adam. I'm going to die because I'm still of Adam. But I have the new birth. And when I die, I'll be absent from the body, present with the Lord. There's the new birth right there. I've been born of the Spirit. I've already been born in the flesh. Thanks to my mom and dad. And to their parents, their parents, their parents, their parents. All the way back to Adam. I'm a sinner. Even my thoughts. So, like I said, well, what do you do with somebody who, and I, I'm not being bad to them, and they have, what you, their mind's not right, and they're just, you know, by birth, they're, they're born, where they don't have the, if they don't have the capability of knowing their sin is a consequence against God, then there's no accountability. So, in all actuality, a godly mother father is doing really injustice to their child by teaching, hey, you've done wrong by stealing that cookie. I've got to punish you. Because now they're going to learn one day, not only are their parents' authority, but God. So one of the things I try to do, which I don't do all the time, but I try to do when I'm preaching on the street and I see someone walking with a child, I was shut up. The Bible says, Jesus said unto me, suffer the little children to come unto me. That's the parent's job. Not the pastor, not the Sunday school teacher. I wouldn't even trust them today. It's the parent's job. There used to be in every house, I don't know about today, I have to check. There used to be every day, uh, in every house, there used to be a Bible. A lot of them record the family tree. My, my grandma, she had that big Bible, the big Catholic Bible, and it was only to record the family trees and all that. I don't know if their Bibles are all today, but... I tell you, you know what I am? I'm a sinner in the, in, in the eyes of God. You know what I am? I am saved Amen. by the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son. I was born to die. Jesus Christ was born to suffer and die, to be buried and to raise again out of that grave, according to the Scripture. He was born a child. He was, born, he was not born. He was given as God. Never say, see, what, see, the idea is to say Mary is the mother of God. No. She was the, she was the mother yes. of the human, but she wasn't the mother of God. That God has always been. A son is given. For God, I just love you and thank you, Lord, for great, wonderful things of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord God, to look at our birth and look at the birth of Jesus, that it's all in the Scriptures. And Lord God, we'll be held accountable. Lord, you've shown me so much. Lord God, help me to teach others, Lord God. Help that others will come out just to hear your word, to grow by your word. Please, Lord. Lord, I don't want to stand at the judgment as you've given me so much and I didn't do nothing with it. Lord, for Jesus' sake, we pray. Amen. Amen.